We had 10 or so and gave them away and gave some bread and gave some pantry items, so that was quite exciting. So this small little endeavour as we reach out will grow and get bigger over the next, no doubt, weeks and months. So it won't happen this Wednesday, but it will happen the following Wednesday at about, between about 3 and 4 uh, from here. So that will be good. So if you can help, come pack hampers at 11.30 or so at, at Rivers and then we bring food up here and give it away. So thank you. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your donations. Thank you for your hands and cars and feet. That's the important thing um, to do. So thank you. Just want to say thank you for that. <clears throat> We're just going to come into a time of prayer before I uh, share this morning. So let's do that. Father God, we just come now and bow before you and celebrate all your goodness and all your love towards us. No doubt there's many things on our minds that need prayer today. So God, I pray that you, you hear our prayers. Hear the cries of our heart. Lord God, have your way. Have your way in people's lives and in situations we pray. We think of Rhonda and Ian's daughter who has made your surgery tomorrow, Lord God, and we just pray that that goes well. Fathers who may be facing results and tests and all things that happen, Lord, as we wait and sit across from doctors' desks and hear news, sometimes not the news we had hoped for, but God, we thank you that you are there. Lord, as a church community, we thank you that we are able to reach out in small ways to people's in, people in need, in practical ways. Lord, as a church community, challenge us and stretch us. As a church community, be our hope and be our comfort. Lord, I thank you that we can come and celebrate you here in this place, this Easter Sunday. And as we open your word again afresh, Lord, come and speak to us and meet us at those intersections of life. Lord Jesus, we thank you and celebrate you that the cross is empty and the tomb is empty. And we rejoice with you, Lord Jesus, that you are our hope and our salvation. Thank you, Lord God, that you hear our prayer. Forever may we glorify you with our mouths and with our service and with our hands and feet here in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. So this is sort of part two of what happened on Friday, but there'll be a, a little bit of a recap, so in case you weren't here. My message this morning is called Blood, Wood and Stone. This is it. It's Easter. It's Easter Sunday. This is where it all begins. It began with the blood of Christ, the wooden cross, the, the stones rolled away, the, the empty tomb. Probably for some of you that may have been Christians for many years, familiar words, familiar images. He put us here to make an eternal difference. He put us here to show everyone around us how much He loves us and how much He loves them who do not know Him. He put us here to be His hands and feet, to be the presence of Christ out in our places of work, in our homes, in our streets, in our schools, to be the presence of Jesus to those around us. We proclaim the power of the cross and the tomb today by faithfully serving Him. Being His disciples, His hands and feet were damaged for you, nailed to a cross. The only person in heaven that will carry scars from this world is Jesus Christ. Jesus is the most talked about person that has ever walked on the planet. He stepped out of heaven to connect with us. Let us honour him. Let us worship him. For he came to take our sins away. So we rejoice this Easter morn of new life and new hope, of new expectations. Be the best you can be because of Jesus. He reached across that gap. Thank God for the sacrifice he made. For God sent his one and only son. And he comes and meets us. Maybe in that dark place, in that place of brokenness, in that place of hurting. And connects with us and redeems us and saves us. 
and says, You are loved, my child, for I know you. We read in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 6. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. And we continue to seek Him this day. Let's stop looking in all the wrong places. Maybe you have a void in your life, an emptiness in your life. Let Jesus fill that. Let Jesus fill that empty space. Let Him be your Saviour. Let Him be your Redeemer. Let Him be your hope today. In the book of Acts, just after the Gospels, chapter 4, verse 13. They comment on Peter and John and they say when they saw the courage of Peter and John and realised that they were unschooled, ordinary men. Anyone here today? Amen? You're right. <laughs> they were astonished. And they took note that these men, these people had been with Jesus. May the message of Jesus be proclaimed to those around us. May they see in me and see in you the difference that he makes. So we've faced the sorrow of Friday. And now today we come to the joy of Sunday. Jesus gives us a special gift, eternal life, as we receive that and embrace that and welcome that. Surrounded with the crucifixion, there's this powerful scene in, in the garden where, where Jesus' blood, uh, sweat is like blood. and It's in Luke 22, verse 44. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. But today we have the hope of Sunday. And the images of the crucifixion and all that happened, it got very dark, didn't it? Now there is good dark and bad dark, and that was bad dark. As Jesus was nailed upon that cross, hanging there and life draining from him, dying for our sins. Let's just remember this scene from Luke 22, uh, 23, verse 44. And it was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. For the, star, for the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion standing there, seeing all that had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. What is your confession? What do you say about Jesus this Easter time? We need the light of Christ to come and shine into our lives. Has the man, the ministry, the message, the gospel made a difference to your life and my life, to our story, to where we sit today? Yes, it has. I'm convinced, I'm certain that Jesus was dead and, and buried and then he rose again and he is alive. We've sung about it, we've celebrated it. It's true. In the, in the Gospels we read and, that he appeared to many people, hundreds of people. Picking up Mark's Gospel in chapter 16. It's early in the morning, that Sunday morning. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Siloam brought spices so they might go and anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, who rolled the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? Good thought, I thought. But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. 
As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in white robes, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Friends, it wasn't what they were expecting. (coughs) Don't be alarmed, he said. You're looking for Jesus, the, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? (coughs) But go tell the disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. This figure in white knew the whole story. Knew about the death, knew about the resurrection, knew about the disciples. (coughs) Don't be alarmed, ladies. Don't you remember what he said? He is not dead but alive and this is Easter and this is our celebration and this is our joy and this is our hope. Without him I'm nothing. Without him I can do nothing. Without him my life counts for nothing. For I can do all things because he gives me life and hope and strength. His death replaces my death. We're told it was early in the morning. It was dark and Mary comes to the tomb and as she approaches the tomb she knows that something's just not quite right. The stone's been rolled away. Imagine their fear. Imagine their concern. Hear me this morning. The stone was not rolled away in order for Jesus to get out of the tomb. It was rolled away so others could see inside the tomb and know that he was alive. Let nothing separate us from our faith in Jesus. Romans 8.38 up on the screen there. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. May we embrace Jesus today. Our hope, our faith. Let nothing separate you. Any seniors today? Anyone know a senior? Anyone a senior? (laughs) No, no seniors here, that's true. A lady rings the newspaper office. Screaming down the phone at the man on the other end. Where's my paper? Where's my paper? Loudly she's demanding, where's my Sunday paper? Madam, the employer says, today is Saturday. The Sunday paper isn't delivered until Sunday. It's quite a long pause. Some muttering on the end of the phone. Oh, so sorry. That's why no one was in church today. (laughs) But guess what? You've come on the right day at the right time. And it's no accident that Jesus wants you here this morning as we celebrate Easter together. For he is alive. He's done it all and paid it all. And we celebrate that. The blood, the wood, the stone, it's all come together. Proclaiming one timeless message. For God so loved the world. Today, may that be our confession. That Jesus is our Saviour. He really lived. He really died. And He really rose again. Believe it with all your heart and all that you are. We have this powerful image in John chapter 20 as we come to a close this morning. The doors were locked. But suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you, he said. And he said to Thomas, you know, that guy that doubted, here mate, put your finger here. Look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. 
Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. My Lord and my God, Thomas exclaimed. Then Jesus told them, you believe because you have seen. Blessed are those who believe without seeing. Let us not be faithless any longer, but let us believe. God bless you. Amen.